Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. I'll be looking at the CSEC Physics June 2020 paper 1. And if you're visiting my channel for the very first time, a very warm welcome. And please hit that subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so that you know when new videos are being uploaded. Also, I in presenting this paper to you, I went ahead and these answers are provided by a physics teacher. And so I am just your presenter. So I'll be just giving you the answers. I wanted to assist those of you students who are doing physics so that you can do as best as possible on these upcoming exams. So let's get into this paper. So for some of the questions, I'll be reading them. And for some, I'll just go ahead and tell you the answer because because you can look on your screen and you can see the questions and read them for yourself as well. So let's get into this paper. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up by liking it so that it can help as many students as possible. The first question says, the measurement of the external diameter of a measuring cylinder is most accurately done by using a... So, the answer for question one is D. Let's move on to number two. Given that force equal mass times acceleration, the unit of force could be written as the answer for number two is D. Three says 0 0.0000462N expressed in standard form is the answer is A. Let's go to number four. It says the mass of an astronaut is 70 kilogram when standing on the moon. When he returns to Earth, his approximate weight will be? The answer is D. 700 N. Let's go to number five. The moment of a force is defined as the, is it A, moment in time when a force is first applied to a body, B, length of time for which a force is applied to a body, C, product of the force and its perpendicular distance from the turning point to the force, D, ratio of the force and its perpendicular distance from the turning point. The answer for five is C. Six says the unit for momentum is, the answer is B. Seven, which of the following remains unchanged? Changed with, with an increase in temperature, A, mass, B, density, C, volume, or D, relative density. The answer is A, mass. Let's go on to number eight. So the answer for number eight is C. So let's move on to number nine now. Which of the following measures may be classified as scalar quantities? One, time, two, speed, three, displacement. So what would be your answer? So our answer for nine would be A, one and two only. Move on to number question 10. So item 10 refers to the following graph. So you can 
take a look at the graph. So the question says, the graph above shows how the displacement of a runner from a starting line varies with time this runner is A, going slower and slower, B, going at a steady speed, C, going faster and faster, D, not moving. So the answer is B, going at a steady speed. You can always look on the diagram again. Let's move on to number 11. It says the vectors act at point O and are perpendicular to each other. Which of the following pairs represents both the magnitude and direction of their resultant? The answer for question 11 is D. Twelve. The acceleration due to gravity is to be determined by measuring the time taken for a small steel ball to fall through a specific height. Which of the following activities is unnecessary? A. Finding the mass of the ball. B. Allowing the ball to drop and starting the stopwatch at the same instant. C. Measuring the height through which the ball falls. D. Repeating the time measurements and taking the average. So the answer is A. Let's go on to number 13. So number 13 says, on which of the following features does the pressure at a point in a liquid depend? One, density of the liquid. Two, depth from the surface. Three, area of the cross-section of the container. So our answer for question 13 would be A, 1 and 2. Let's move on to number 14. So here we have item 14 reference to the following diagram, which shows a simple extension X against force F graph for a light spring. So there we have our graph. So the question says, Based on the graph above, which of the following statements would be true? So the answer for question 14 would be B, 1 and 3 only. Let's go on to number 15. So here, item 15 refers to the following diagram, which shows a dam. So 15, the pressure on the dam at the bottom of the reservoir depends on the, is it A, mass of water held back by the dam, B, volume of water held by the dam, C, length of the reservoir, or D, depth of the water. So 15 is D. Let's go on to number 60. A bubble of gas rises to the surface of a soft drink. This is because the A, up thrust on the bubble is greater than the weight of the bubble. B, up thrust on the bubble is greater than the weight of water it displaces. C, weight of the water displaced by the bubble is less than the weight of the bubble. D, density of the gas is greater than the density of the drink. So A would be your answer for 16. Let's go to number 17. So here it says, there are no attractive forces between the molecules in a gas. A, solid and a liquid. B, liquid and gas. C, liquid or D, gas. The answer is D, gas. 18. Which of the following statements about the pressure law are true? 1. The ratio of pressure to Kelvin temperature is constant. Two, volume is constant. Three, pressure is constant. The answer for 18 is A, one and two only. Let's go to number 19. Which of the following temperature ranges 
is most suitable for a clinical thermometer? The answer is D. 35 degrees Celsius to 44 degrees Celsius. Let's move on to number 20. So, the answer for question 20 is C. Let's move on to number 21. Here it says, so the answer for 21 is C. 22. The answer for 22, it says a light bulb is filled with a gas at a temperature of 293K. If the initial pressure of the gas is P, what will the pressure be when the temperature increases to 360K? The answer is B. Let's move on to 23. Which of the following materials is both a good absorber and a good emitter of thermal heat energy? The answer for 23 is D. A flat metal plate painted black. Go to 24. The specific latent heat of a vaporization of water is the energy required to change 1 kg of water at? The answer is C. 100 degrees C to steam at 100 degrees C. Let's go to number 25. So item 25 here, we have a diagram which shows water boiling at the top of a glass test tube while a piece of ice wrapped in gauze remains unmelted at the bottom. So it says, which of the following is the reason for this occurrence? So the answer for question 25 is A, water is a poor conductor of heat. Let's go to 26. So here we have item 6 refers to the following diagram, which shows a transverse wave at a particular instant. So there you have your diagram. 26 says the wavelength of the wave is equal to the distance. So 26 is CPS. Let's move on to number 27 now. So we have another diagram here. So item 27 refers to the following diagram, which shows the instantaneous profile of a wave traveling across a water surface. From the information above, the frequency is, so for 27 is D, unknown. Let's go to number 28. An echo is quieter than the original sound that produced it. This shows that compared to the original sound, the echo has a, is it A? Smaller amplitude, B, shorter wavelength, C, lower frequency, or D, slower speed. The answer is A, smaller amplitude. 29. So here we have another diagram refers to the following graphs with axes having the same scales of two sound waves, P and Q. So there we have them. So the question says, based on the information about which of the following statements, statements is true. 
So the answer for 29 is C. Q is louder than P, but P has a higher pitch. Let's move to 30. So the answer for 30 is... A. Let's move on to 31. So the answer for 31 is B. Let's go on to number 32. So here we have item 32 refers to the following ray diagram of a converging lens. So, 32 says, which line lies along the principal axis of the converging lens? So, the answer for 32 is A, J, K. Let's go to 33 now. Which of the following diagram? Best diagrams, best represents the wave generated in a ripple tank by a small spherical dipper vibrating at a constant frequency. So let's see. So the answer for 33 is, so let's look at all of them. So the answer is A. Let's move on to number 34. So item 34 refers to the following diagram in which two coherent light sources produces an interferen interference pattern on a screen of bright and dark fringes. So it says, the reason for the formation of the bright fringes is that A, these positions contain more light energy, B, the crests are larger than the trolls along these lines, C, all the crests and trolls are in phase along these points, D, all the crests and trolls are out of phase along these points. So the answer for 34 is C. Let's go to 35. The 35, an object O is viewed in a plane mirror PQ. Which of the following diagrams correctly shows the formation of the image? So, the answer would be A. A. Let's go on to number 36 now. It says, which diagram best shows the path taken by a ray of light through a rectangular glass block? So, that's A, look at A. Then we have B. Then we have C. Then we have D. So the answer for 36 is C. Let's go on to number 37 now. Thirty-seven. 
says an explosion causes the emission of the following types of radiation. One, light. Two, sound. Three, infrared. Which of these will be received first by a person some distance away from the source? So our answer for 37 would be B. One and three only. Let's go to 38. So item 38 refers to the following diagram, which shows two similar loudspeakers connected to the same audio frequency generator. The speakers are set up a few meters away from a path XY. So there we have our audio frequency generator. In our loudspeakers. So all that is said is represented in the diagram. So 38 says, at some points along XY, no sound is heard because is it A, the sound waves are di diffracted, B, the sound waves is refracted away from those points, C, interference of the sound waves takes place, D, the sound waves are reflected back to the same source. So the answer for 38 is C. Let's go to 39. Magnetic induction occurs when the answer is B. Iron needles near a magnet become magnetized. 40. Rectification can best be done by using a. Is it? What's our answer for 40? A. Is it A. Transformer B. Capacitor C. Transistor or D. Dode. The answer is D. And forgive me if I didn't pronounce it correctly. 41. So let's look at 41. Item 41 refers to the following diagram, which represents a straight wire carrying a current into the plane of a piece of paper. Which of the following diagrams best represents the magnetic field around the wire? So, it's A, then we have B there, then C, and then D. So, the answer for 41 is D. Let's go to 42. Here 42 refers which of the following diagrams represents the magnetic field existing between two opposite magnetic poles. So the answer for 42, let's take a look at all of them. So we have there we have A, then B there then C, and then we have D. So the answer for 42 is A. Let's go to number 43. Which of the following equations cannot be used to determine the power dissipated into a resistor? So the answer for 43 is C. Go to number 44. Which of the following circuit diagrams best represents a series arrangement? So let's take a look. So the answer for 45 would be B. Go on to number 46 now. So item 46 refers to the following diagram. So there we have it. So appropriate labels for W and X are. So 
So the answer for 46 is C. 47. Which of the following is most suitable for the core of an electromagnet? A, steel, B, carbon, C, copper, D, soft iron. So the answer for 47 is D. Let's go to number 48. So, so here we see that the, which of the following diagrams is a representation of the current slash PD relationship for a metallic conductor and at a constant temperature? So the answer for 48 is, let's take a look at all of them. So answer for 48 is B. Move on to number 49 now. So, the answer for 49 is D. There you have it. So 50, which of the following circuits will this lamp light up? The answer for 50, taking a look at all of them. The answer for 50 is B. Let's move on to 51. 51 says, which of, the pair of, which of the following pairs of statements is true for both iron and steel? C, iron easily magnetized, steel retains its magnetism well. Let's go to 52. So item 52 refers to the following truth table with inputs A and B and output C. So which of the following logic gates does the truth table above represent? So 52 is A. Let's look at 53 now. So item 53 refers to the following diagram of a simple AC generator. The parts labeled X in the diagram are known as the So we're answering question 53. So the answer for 53 is B, slip rings. Let's move on to number 54. Which device allows one circuit to switch another circuit on or off without any direct contact between them a magnetic relay b el electromagnet c generator d motor so the answer for 54 is a let's go to 55 which of the following graph shows how the activity of a radioactive source varies with time So the answer is D. Let's move on to number 56. 
which of the following are two properties of an A particle? So the answer for 56, A says no charge, very penetrating, B, positive charge, very penetrating, C, negative charge, not very penetrating, D, positive change, not very penetrating, D would be your answer. Let's go to 57. So the answer for 57 is C. Number 58, the answer for 58 is C, Albert Einstein. Let's go to 59. Which of the following statements about a proton is not true? A, it is a hydrogen atom minus an electron. B, it has the same mass as that of an electron. C, it has a mass about 2,000 times that of an electron. Or D, it has a charge equal in size and opposite in sign to that of an electron. So the answer for 59 is B. 60 says, which of the following equations is correct? So the answer for 60 is C. So there you have it. We have come to the end of the C6, June 2020 paper. I hope this was of assistance to you for those of you who are doing the C6 physics exams. Thank you so much for watching.